Scarlet or Blade. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Silent Night, Memoirs of a Royal Guard, Chapter 13. For two full weeks, I was acting sergeant. Even after the temporary replacements went home, I held on to the title sergeant when Chaser was hit particularly bad and the captain saw it fit for me to continue on. I thought it would be awkward about responsible for my peers, but no pony seemed to have issue with it. They did their job, and I did mine. Well, Sergeant Windchasers. As a reward for my hard work and dedication, I was given a few mandatory days off. The captain was worried I had worked myself too much. The sergeant even tore up my note about sleeping. Extraordinary circumstances, she said before commending me for my honesty. Oh well, I could see their point. I was standing guard quietly in Princess Luna's chambers the day before my mandatory vacation was to start. She was excited and antsy. For most of the day, she had been pacing, and finally she said, Silent night! We cannot wait for tomorrow eve. Princess? Tomorrow is nightmare night, and we have decided that we shall grace the citizens of Ponyville with our royal presence and show them we are not to be feared, she exclaimed loudly. Tomorrow? No, tomorrow I wasn't on duty. She couldn't go without me. It isn't that I didn't trust the other house guards. I did. They weren't me, though. Sidelined when Princess Luna wanted to go out. Tomorrow? Princess, perhaps I. it can be delayed until next week. I suggested. Princess Luna looked at me strangely. The day has not changed in many years, Silent Knight. Did thou not celebrate it? No, Princess, I said. My father thought it was frivolous, but I did not volunteer that information. Then thou should celebrate this year. Go forth on thy vacation and enjoy, she declared. Yes, Princess, was my reply, and I meant it. That is exactly what I'd do. You want to what? Iridescence asked me, as if I was crazy. I repeated the plan calmly, disguise myself, infiltrate Ponyville, and keep an eye on Princess Luna to ensure she is safe on Nightmare Night. On your mandatory vacation, Iridescence reminded me. The princess said to go and celebrate. I chose to do so in Ponyville where I can keep an eye on her. Will you help disguise me or not? Iridescence frowned at me and then sighed. Fine. I'm on duty here anyway, so it's not like we could spend time together. She went to her foot locker and pulled out a potion. My eyes narrowed. What is that? I asked. Pulling the cork out with her teeth, my very special sunbony said, The potion that turned you into a mare. <laughs> what could be a better disguise? She had a valid point. Very few people would recognize Silent Dame. It only lasted six hours last time. I needed to last all night. Runic reworked it. It should last until you take the antidote. I nodded, then paused. Wait. Why do you have this? Iridescence waved a hoof at me and said, No reason. Mind your business. She flicked some of the potions into my face. Am I a mare? I asked. No, Iridescence said, trying not to laugh. I walked over to the mirror and thought, Runic, my friend, you and I are going to have a talk. My coat was pink. I was a stallion, but now I was pink. I looked like a cotton candy silent night. This does not work for me. The laughing started then. I went to the water basin and tried to wash the color off. That didn't work. Iridescence kept laughing and was ultimately helpful. She took an all old sheet from her trunk and threw it on me. With her unicorn magic, she made two eye holes. Good enough? she asked. I guess I am now ready to be undercover. Lightly, I pressed my sheet-covered nose to hers and added, I'm off to protect the princess. Don't wait up. I ran out into the hall and headed for the train station. I would be there before the princess, and she would never know. Ponyville was in full swing for Nightmare Night. They evidently took the evening very seriously. I walked alongside the hayride to the scout the area. It is hard to tell who was out of place when everyone was dressed in costumes. One particular pony looked suspicious. 
who was dressed like an engine, also kept staring at me. Was my cover blown? The stallion approached me, and I shifted my weight onto my back legs so that I could leap into action. Would you like to dance? He asked me. Oh, oh, that was not what I had expected, not at all. But blending in was important. I nodded at him, and he led me to the area in front of the stage. I'm not much of a dancer, but I held my own. I bopped up and down under my sheets while he asked me where I was from. All of my answers were in the form of yes and no via nod or shake. He seemed okay with that. Once the dance was done, I excused myself and headed back to patrol. One Pegasus pony was pushing around a storm cloud and scaring others with thunder and lightning. She thought it was funny, and in general it was harmless, so I left it slide. It was also the time for the mayor's address. Every pony collected in front of the stage, looking around, I spotted two other ponies dressed identically to me. That just seemed lazy. On stage, the mayor greeted every pony and introduced a zebra named Zakora. Zakora, it seems, was going to tell the legend of Nightmare Moon. She related the story, and I couldn't help feeling it was in bad taste. Nightmare Moon was gone, and Princess Luna was a far different pony. I realized that it was only a story meant to frighten foals into going easy on the candy. I couldn't fault pony parents for that. I just wish they had come up with something new. Thankfully, the princess missed, or missed the retelling, and just as it ended, she showed up on a chariot in grand fashion. She was shrouded in robe and had her guards pulling her. They were dressed like bats for the evening. It was a clever costume, but again, this didn't seem to further the impression that she wasn't Nightmare Moon. The ponies of Ponyville and I hurriedly followed the chariot back into town. We arrived just in time to see Princess Luna leap from it. To my surprise, the two guards pulling it simply flew on without her. The princess was alone. I would speak to them later, but thanks, Celestia, I was here. The ponies of Ponyville knelt immediately, and I followed suit. It would have been too obvious if I remained at attention. It may be disrespectful to say, but in my opinion, Prince Osuna came on a bit strong. In a loud, canterlot addressing tone, the princess said, Citizens of Ponyville, we have graced your tiny village with our presence, so that you might behold the real princess of the night. The creature of Nightmare Moon no longer, but instead a pony who deserves your love and admiration. Together we shall change this default celebration into a bright and glorious feast. Oh, princess, I thought. A pink pony dressed as a chicken shouted something, and all of the foals ran away screaming. My eyes narrowed. I recognized that pink pony. She was the one with a cannon. That caught Princess Luna's attention, and she exclaimed, What? No, children, no. You have no longer have a reason to fear us. Screams of delight is what your princess desires, not screams of terror. Even I could tell that she, that this particular event wasn't going to go wonderfully. The ponies were still cowering as Princess Luna offered them her hoof. Even the mare was too frightened to speak. Very well, then. Be that way. We won't even bother with the royal canterlot farewell, Princess Luna said before storming off. Another pony, dressed as Star Swirl the Bearded, followed after her. I got up from my position and followed at a safe distance. Creeping along in the bushes while under a sheet was not easy. Iridescence was a stealthy pony, not me. I was close enough to keep an eye on the princess, but slightly out of earshot. The two conversed, and I heard the princess say, Twilight Sparkle, wasn't that the captain's sister? The princess started to float, and her voice carried through the area. It was thou who unleashed the powers of harmony upon us and took away our dark powers. Then she went quiet again. It went on like that for a bit longer before the pair headed off. I followed as quietly as I could. We all ended up outside a cottage on the outskirts of town. To my surprise, Twilight Sparkle pulled a yellow Pegasus mare out of the college cottage. It was the same one that had been at the poster at the train station. She was clearly terrified of the princess. 
The goal seemed to be training Princess Luna to speak quietly, which made my job even more difficult. From over my shoulder, I could hear the sounds of chicken-clad pink pony approaching with all of the foals. My eyes narrowed. She was the ringleader. If I could take her out, the Princess of the Night might have a chance of blending in. I shifted in the bushes, ready to pounce. She must have sensed me because she screamed and ran off, taking the foals with her. Behind them, Princess Luna shouted, Nay, children, wait! And then looked sad once more. It hurt me to see her like that. I knew that it was time for me to take the chill chicken out of the equation. I hated to leave the princess alone, but she is she as in the care of the mare, I believe to be the captain's sister. Carefully, I backed out of the bush. I was hiding in and made my way back to town. Quietly, I moved along the hallway or the alleys between the houses of Ponyville until I could get a good view of the village square and the festivities. This was going to need to be quick snatch and subdue. I was going a little outside the manual, but royal guards learned to defend against this sort of attack. It also made us experts on how to carry them out. The chicken was going door to door begging for candy, surrounded by her posse of foals. Extracting her would be a challenge. I pressed myself up against the wall of a house and hid in the shadows. A distraction was exactly what I needed, something to get every pony's attention right when the chicken passed by the opening in the alley. It was right around that time Princess Luna returned with Twilight Sparkle. As expected, the villagers fell to the ground before the princess. This was my chance to grab the chicken. When I turned to look for her, she had somehow moved from the house next to me to the one down the street. No pony moves that fast. My plan would need to be adjusted, or so I thought. Something had suddenly changed. Princess Luna was happy and the ponies did not seem to fear her. I crept out of my hiding place and blended back into the crowd. She was having fun. Everything seemed to be getting on the right hoof. I asked that thou call us me Luna, fair Applejack. Hear me, villagers, all of you, call me Luna, she declared. Call her Luna. That was a high level of familiarity, to, but the princess was allowed to make such decisions. In my mind, it was better familiarity than fear. There were smiles all around, and I relaxed. What could go wrong, I thought, and immediately regretted that. The cold that was dressed as a pirate tipped forward and almost fell into the apple-bobbing tank. Princess Luna saw the danger and rescued him. Only instead of sighs of relief, we were met again with shrieks of the chicken. Celestia, take that chicken. The fragile bonds between the princess and her subjects broke down at that point and chaos reigned. Ponies ran in all directions with little regard for caution. It was the gala all over again. The difference was this time was that Princess Luna and I were in the middle of it. I started to push my way through the crowd towards her. If I could get to her side, I could protect her. It seemed my services would not be required that night. Protecting an alicorn princess is not exactly the same as protecting any pony else. We treat them the same, and sometimes it is easy to forget that they wield seemingly endless power. Princess Luna demonstrated that. Lighting, lightning arched across the sky, and her voice echoed in my very soul. Be still. Every pony was immediately compelled to stop and kneel before the princess. Despite all of my training, even I found myself on the ground without a second thought. It was an impressive feat of magic. Princess Luna was swift and direct with her decree. Nightmare Night was cancelled forever, and she was leaving. It was not the outcome I had expected, but I didn't blame her. This night was a reminder of dark times. Uh, the ponies of Ponyville were picking themselves up, their expressions a mixture of sadness, fear, and confusion. I looked on, angry that the chicken's actions had offended the princess. Alicorn or not, she had feelings, too. I turned to go and find the princess, but it seemed Twilight Sparkle had beat me to the task. Perhaps she would be better able to handle the situation. I lingered in the town and casually helped straighten things up a bit. I was shocked at the amount of damage that the ponies had wrought in such a short period of time. These ponies didn't do anything halfway. They also looked miserable as they went about their tasks of cleaning. 
What an awful night. In the distance, I swore I could hear the sound of the chicken squawking, mocking me in my princess of the night. Squawk on, chicken, I muttered under the sheet. One day we will have a go. The mayor and Zakora started consoling the foals and advised that perhaps a candy offering could return the night around. I doubted some sugary candy could improve the princess's mood, but it wouldn't have been the first time I've been wrong. By some miracle, Princess Una, Twilight Sparkle, and the chicken and all the foals returned to the town not long later, and the celebration was back on. From that point on the evening went perfectly. The princess played games, smashed, grabbed, gourds, and even enjoyed some pranks. I loosened up too and danced with the stallion again. Don't judge me. I'm on vacation, and he kept asking. Everything went great until it was time to call it an evening. I turned to head towards the train station to catch the overnight express. Princess Luna was behind me, now blocking my path. Casually, I moved to go around her, and she just said in a new, softer, but no less commanding voice, Silent night? I wasn't silent night right then. I was a pink pony dressed as a ghost. All I had to do was pretend I was acting out a role of a ghost and stay in character. It was a brilliant plan. Now, just to get into character. Yes, princess. I said, stupid, honest mouth. We could have been fine. Pink is not thy color. Yes, princess, I said softly. She was right, of course. I had not meant to be pink. That was Runic's mistake. I wonder if she would have known that it was me if the potion had worked correctly. Dost thou need a ride home? she asked. Yes, princess. I wasn't sure if what I had done had broken the rules. Princess Luna didn't seem upset. The other two royal guards arrived and with her in the chariot and we got on. She went first, of course. My sheet came off, and I sat as proudly as I could with my pink coat. Once we were airborne and halfway home, she turned and suddenly hugged me. It was a shocking but sweet, and I hugged back. Thou art most kind to have been so concerned about us that thou came here, she said. I smiled. I promised I'd always be in your corner, princess. She smiled back and corrected, Luna. I repeated, I'll always be in your corner, Princess Luna. She shook her head, looked me in the eyes, and pronounced it slower. Luna. Princess Luna. I repeated exactly. The princess sat up and said, Thou frustrates us. But kept a wing around me for the ride home. Author's note, this was the story idea that motivated me to write this fan fiction. I just thought it would be a funny use of a ghost pony. It was actually a guard. I built everything before it so that it would make sense. I'm stoked to share it. Silent Night goes undercover. My first true crossover into the show. I hope everyone enjoys it. Once again, thank you all for the comments, sums, and favorites. They're all appreciated. Anyways, I hope you guys have had a wunderbar day.